Hey y'all, welcome back. I'm Shayna Searcy and we are going to do another day in our watercolor journals. And for this day, we're going to be doing cherry blossoms again. So the last video we did cherry blossoms, we're going to do them again, but in a different way. So the last one we painted them traditionally with watercolor, painted out all our blossoms, but now we're going to do something where we're going to lay down um, a background and then we're going to draw our cherry, cherry blossoms on top. So the background is going to be fun, abstract, loose, there are going to be some leaf shapes in it. And then on top of that, we're going to draw our beautiful cherry blossom illustration. So with the background, we are going to lay down a light color, put on a slightly darker bit of leaves. I'm going to add leaf shapes um, to it, but very light and very airy. And then on top of that, we're going to add our cherry blossom or line drawing, which will be dark and contrasty and, and more harsh. Uh, and I think that that juxtaposition will work great, but we'll find out, I guess. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to use the same colors I did in the last one for the most part, where I'm going to use this raw umber. So let me put that down. You know what? I'm going to do it down here on the bottom, and then I'm going to mask this off. So let's do our raw umber so that we have like a clean line across the bottom of our painting. All right. And I'm also going to use sap green. Let me take my, I have this little spray bottle to kind of pre-wet things. You still have to add more water later, but this kind of gives an overall base of water. I'm going to use sap green. And I don't, I don't think I'm going to use, um, the magenta. I'm going to use a little Payne's gray. Let's put the magenta down just in case we want to use it. Maybe I'll add just a little hint of it in. Okay, so though that's our color palette for the most part. Let's just mask that area off so we work above that. And then I gotta put my clip back on. Because I am gonna paint a very loose background, so I need kind of a border down there. Do, do, clip, clip, clip. Okay, so up top, I have switched to a size 12 Princeton Aqua Elite brush, a little bit bigger than my size 10 Velvet Touch that I've been using. Um, I also have, ooh, this quill brush. This thing holds so much water. We'll see. We'll see if we're going to introduce that. Um, we're going to start with a brownish background. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to paint water. My water is a little dirty, so you might even be able to see it, but that's okay for this particular piece. I'm going to have loose organic edges and I'm going to take some of this brown water down and I'm just going to loosely, quickly paint in Let's drop in a few dark spots and splatters, and then we're going to let this dry. Okay, so this is representing kind of the color of the branches. But again, we're not necessarily painting branches themselves, so we're going to let that dry. Have this nice kind of loose, organic, funky um, soft background and then we're gonna paint in some leaf shapes on top of it and then we're gonna use our ink and wash we might i might add a little bit of a suggestion of the magenta in something that resembles like a flowery shape but i'm not gonna trace that or outline it in any way with the ink okay all right we're back it's nice and dry well it's it's very close to very dry but i feel like i feel a little dampness in it I'm going to press on. All right, so sap green. This is not sap green. Although, do I want a darker blue or green? I could always add phthalo at this point. All right, let's get some sap green out, but we're going to lighten it quite a bit. I'm going to use my size 12 brush, and I'm going to make giant leaf shapes one 
and I'm going to let these dry as well and layer over them. I want everything to be a little transparent, not a little, a lot transparent. So this brown, I want you to see through this leaf shape. And then I'm going to drop in just a little bit darker color in some spots. Wet on wet, that's important. I want it to be super contrasty in those spots, but the rest kind of fade out into oblivion. These are kind of coming from all sides. Let's do one here. All right, so let's let this dry and then we'll come back in with one more layer of leaf shapes, smaller and a little darker. And then I'm going to, ugh, should I put in some of that magenta? Let's go for it. Let's see, very, very light, really rinsing my brush off. A little magenta in there. Very expressive, but not an abstract. Okay. This shape bothers me. Okay, there we go. And you could always drop in just a little bit darker color. I didn't want to do this, but I'm doing it. Okay, there we go. Okay, I'm not going to touch any more of this, I swear. Race, <laughs> I'm raising my right hand. Brushes down. We'll let this all dry, one more layer of leaf shapes, and then we're gonna do our pen and ink. Not pen and ink, it is ink. Um, and draw out some beautiful cherry blossom shapes in a hard, dark line. All right, this layer is dry. We're gonna do one more layer of green over top of these. We're gonna make them a little bit smaller, but we want them to overlap. and see through kind of the bottom of what's going on over there. There we go. Once you start building in these transparencies, things get really interesting, a lot less flat. I'm kind of glad I added in this pink. It really gives it a little more character. Um, and maybe one more. Maybe I should do a little pink. Oh, my cloth definitely needs to be switched out. It's leaving behind. And my water needs to be cleaned. A little bit of pink overlap. There. Okay, so we have this really fun background, lots of layering, pink and green and brown. Um, I am gonna add in just a little bit, oh, I'm gonna regret this, of brown. Somewhat branch-like doodads here. This is fun. When you're doing something that's kind of abstract and going to serve as a background, you can really play. And if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. Yeah. Okay. That's good. So what I did there, what I used was my liner brush. I used some of that burnt umber or the raw umber. I went from dark places where there were already dark spots on there and just had some of these leading lines, not leading lines, but just faint lines kind of come out and disappear. 
so dark here, but then taper off and kind of disappear into our design. All right, done. Let's go get our pens. We're gonna put our watercolors away. I am gonna be using illustration pens. These are artist loft ones that I got recently. Um, I will pick out probably like a 0.5 one for this drawing. Um, I have a 0.1 that's too tiny. This one's super ultra tiny. So probably 0.5 is usually pretty good. Um, I have a 0.3 here, which is okay. All right, so I'm gonna grab those. And Micron is also a very similar pen to the one I just showed you. This one is more of a name brand. This is the store brand for Michaels in the US. So whatever you have laying around, as long as it's permanent ink, um, that would be the best. All right, let's let this dry and we'll come back and draw on our beautiful cherry blossoms. Okay, we're back and it's time to get drawing. So I'm gonna use my illustration pen. This is a point, oh, there we go. This is a point three um, Artist Loft, which is just a, a store brand for Michaels. Micron pens would work just as fine. Mine are just starting to run out and I happen to have these on hand. So this is black. You could use all kinds of different things, silver and gold pens or um, gel pens, whatever you have on hand. Um, just make sure if you're using ink like this and you plan to put any other watercolor on it that it is archival and permanent. Um, so that way it doesn't run if you add any more water to it. All right, so we are gonna draw some beautiful cherry blossoms. And we're gonna go right over top of this background. Um, I'm gonna start with just a big, wide open flower, kind of right in the middle. I try, you'll see as I go, I make my petals a little wobbly. And it is okay to you saw I did just there like I went over it more than one time all right so flower number one and then in the center I'm gonna put all my little dots I'm gonna have some come out this way And this is gonna be some messy drawing. We're not going to make perfect kind of fine lines. I'm gonna add some texture to my leaves. My leaves, my petals. Okay. Number one, I'm gonna do another one like over here, but it's gonna be kind of on its side. So this is gonna be the first petal. Looks pretty funky because it's the side of a petal. And then we're gonna have one, two, three, and then like the side of another petal over here. So this is kind of a cup shape and these petals are going away from us. So we'll have our This will be our center in here. Just gonna scribble a little center in there. You can draw your lines first and then add little dots on the ends of them. But there we go, another cherry blossom. You can do some completely on the side and we'll add in the branch in a minute. So on the side, you're gonna have like this little cup shape. Okay, tiny little cup. And you're just gonna see the side of like two or three, probably three at least, petals. Maybe even a little bit of the fourth one over here. You won't see inside, but you can sketch and draw some texture on the outside. And we're gonna add some more, but I do wanna add in a little bit of the branch here. And the branch, I'm gonna draw in these little nodules as I go. And the branch is always a little crooked at the joints. It's a little knobby. This one I probably shouldn't have made. 
So, and then they get thinner as they go up. And you can also draw branches off of that. Let's draw a big branch off of that this way. Hopefully you can see with the angle of the camera how I'm drawing. You just don't want things to taper too quickly and you want branches to come off branches to come off branches. You don't want everything to come off the same branch if that makes sense. All right, so let's add some more flowers here. I'm gonna do another one on the side over here. And you can do various levels of them coming out of their little buds. So it might be, the petals might be a little smaller. They're definitely gonna be darker towards the middle. Let's see, I definitely think we need, I'm gonna put some behind now too. Probably could have skipped a space or two. On the branch, so I could have had a petal there, but we'll just have to have petals on here. of the messy nature of these, or the way I'm doing them anyway. Just kind of scribbling my way through. The more of these little details that you add in, the more interesting it gets. I will let you in on a little secret. It's much harder for me to talk and draw at the same time than it is to paint and draw, or to paint and talk. Now, painting and drawing at the same time, that would be a skill. See, like a little bud. That does not look like a little bud. I don't know what I'm doing. But we're going to make it, we're going to transform it into one. It's going to be like three little petals, kind of slow, very small amount coming out of this little branch and you can add texture to your branch too you can color it in with your pen or give it some areas where there's shadow i love this kind of sketching in my book where i'm just i'm being very physical I'm filling in lots of areas very dynamic kind of just reacting Joints, I think I want it to be darkest. And the underside. Let's do another big flower right here, but it's going to be kind of in the background, so I got to kind of fit it around these other things. But here is where the center of it is going to be. So it's tucked behind. I'm 
there we go we have our fun little cherry blossom sketch over top of our fun little background what might be cool you could leave it just like this and in fact I'm going to take a picture of it just like this so that I remember what it looks like but now I am going to add some more paint to it ah, this might be disastrous come um, experiment with me let's take some of that pink Oh, I hope these, and I'm going to fill in some spots inside the blossoms, not all of it. And it's going to overlap with the green in the background. So it's not going to be pure pink, but I think I'm going to love it. These edges over here, I just don't want them to be as straight or flat. I want them to be have a little more rounded shape to them. That doesn't mean I have to fill in the whole area. Ooh, that's really dark. To lighten it a little or it's gonna take over the, it'll be the only thing your eye goes to. There we go. And we can do a little bit on the branch too, maybe. Just in some of those darker areas. This was not my original intention, but I love it. Be brave, everyone, be brave. Play and experiment. If something sounds like a good idea to you, if it sounds like a terrible idea to you, give it a try. What's the worst that could happen? You have a page that you don't love in your journal and you decide not to do that again. <laughs> That's okay. You've learned something. There we go. Now I do feel like I have to put in some darker green leaves, but super like undefined. There we go. And what the heck, let's put in a few spatters. We can even give this a little mist of water. Who'd have sunk? Throw in just a little bit darker color, like right in the middle of all of these. And then we're going to be done. Actually, adding a little green. Okay, that is a mess, but I love it. It's a beautiful, gorgeous, fun, and exciting mess. Um, like I said, things don't have to be perfect and they don't have to go according to your perfect plan. They can just be fun and experimental. I'm gonna just connect to the sky, to the actual tree. All right, I'm done. We're gonna let it dry and see how it looks dry. I'll take off this tape at the bottom. So don't forget to check out the description, uh, like, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Uh, what else? What else? Check out the description for links and supplies. Uh, leave a comment. Oh yeah. Leave a comment. Tell me how disappointed you are with 
the direction this eventually went or tell me uh, how much you had enjoyed and loved experimenting and having a little bit of fun with your cherry blossoms. We can ooh, take the tape off the bottom so we see a nice little separation of the end of the piece. So I'm Shana Cersei. Thanks so much for joining me for another watercolor journal page. It's always a pleasure to paint with you. I really appreciate you guys coming back week after week, day after day. Enjoy, and we'll get to our next watercolor journal page soon. Thanks, y'all. Happy painting.